All right, and here we are again working on the bike. And uh, you got the engine bolted in place, got the clutch loosely bolted back on. And I got my drive, sh or um, sorry, the uh, jack shaft just kind of sitting there in place. And kind of wanted to show you how I'm going to place this. I'm going to use this sprocket as this effectively the collar which locks the shaft uh, in between these two uh, bearing plates. And so this is going to go down here to the rear drive sprocket and that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with uh, lining up the rear drive sprocket with the jack shaft sprocket because there's not a whole lot of movement there's not a whole lot of adjustment that I can make to this rear wheel. Uh, so I'm going to start by getting that uh, that chain line set up in place correctly and then I'll worry about the chain line from the clutch to the jack shaft. But as you can see I got the jack shaft in there. Uh, it's real close to the engine right there. So actually what I'm going to do is come in on this side, cut a little notch, just a little bit out of this bearing uh, plate so that it comes back and I can also weld it to the seat tube and to the engine plate. So it's just a basic idea of uh, how it's going to work. I'll come over here on this side. I'm going to tuck the bearing retainer plate inside, uh, you know, inside of this air cleaner because uh, the outer air cleaner housing comes down to uh, actually below where this jack shaft is anyway so just keeps me from having to uh, modify that air cleaner housing at least for now anyway so this is the basic idea and uh, I'll get started doing the fab work alright so I got the bearings tapped in and I wanted to show you something they're not a super press fit I can actually kinda of pop them back out with my fingers which actually is a very very good thing because then I don't have to weld it with the bearing installed so but it brings me to another point in that you need to set these up because they only go in one way they're flanged on one side and not on the other so when you're setting these up you need to set them up as opposites like that with the flanges on opposite sides so that your uh, your sprocket and your little locking collar uh, effectively clamp the bearings in place. They don't allow the bearings to walk out like this one just did. It keeps them crammed in. So just a note, uh, just something to be aware of if you're uh, doing this project yourself. All right, as you can see, I got the jack shaft just kind of loosely sitting here in place. And I got my old chain here and I'm gonna check the chain line from the rear sprocket, the rear drive sprocket back here to the jack shaft. Get that laid over there. Come up here, hopefully this thing won't fall down. Let's see how this works. So that's pretty good right there with just the bearing um, kind of butted up against the seat tube there. Uh, that's pretty darn accurate. So, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, tack on this one bearing retainer. And then, because uh, that works great, because now the sprocket is hold it is, is butted up against the bearing so all I gotta do on the other side is just put my uh, locking collar on there and that'll keep the jack shaft in place so that looks pretty good and uh, like I said I'll get the welder and uh, lay a beat lay a little tack on there and see how it is alright so I do need to take a little bit off of this uh, flange uh, this bearing flange just to get it up to uh, made it up to the seat tube it needs to go inside the frame just a little bit more to get the chain line accurate. So this is the one that rides on the side, on the chain side. So I'll make this little cut, grind it smooth, and then we'll test fit it again. Okay, so here you can see my modified bearing plans. The only thing I did was I cut off a little chunk of it. Here's the other one so you can see. 
I just cut off a little chunk from this side and then I created a little bevel right there because there's a weld pool. The seat tube is here, the engine plate is here, and there's a little weld pool uh, that goes around the seat frame from where the engine plate's welded. So I gotta clear that as well. So we got this done, and uh, all we gotta do is just pop the bearing back in there, and we'll put it back in the bike and uh, test fit it again. All right, I got my gloves back on so I don't get greasy fingerprints on my camera. And now we're gonna check the chain line one more time. Get this put into place. There's a lot of play in these bearings, so, you know, I wish it was a little bit tighter, but at least it does give you some flexibility uh, with getting the chain line as good as you can get it. Pull that tight. And that looks pretty good like that. So, I gotta clean a little bit of the paint off right there for the weld. But other than that, it looks like we're ready to tack weld it. So, we'll get the chain off of there, get that cleaned up, and then uh, we'll put a few tack welds on there. All right, as you can see, I took the dry iron, I got the paint cleaned off the seat tube here, and I got the bearing uh, flange and the jack shaft all mounted in place like I need it. And so I'm gonna come in here and just pop a few little tack welds on it. said there's some movement you can see just in the bearing so you have some adjustability and you can even go up and down a tad so get it as close to perfect as possible uh, but absolute dead nuts perfect isn't totally necessary because you do have a little bit of play in there so uh, so now we'll come around to the other side and we'll tack the other uh, bearing retainer in place. Okay, so I had to come in here and cut off that bearing retainer. I had it spaced out too much. It needed to go in towards the frame about another quarter of an inch. And so I did that and I got a couple tacks on there. And then I also came around here and put a couple tacks on the other bearing retainer. And so now I guess we we'll just take, uh, take it apart, take the engine out and uh, we'll get those uh, bearing retainer plates uh, welded in for good.